So we've got the transportation. So now you're moving, you're you're going somewhere, plane, bus, whatever you're doing to get there, and uh, it's for work. So you would think then the transportation is legit, business related, ordinary and necessary in that case. So you can deduct the cost of travel by airplane, train, bus, or car between your home and your business destination. Note that the car gets a little bit messy because then you've got to deal with that whole thing about you know how are you deducting the cars and the mileage method versus the direct method and, and whatnot and then and then so that gets a but obviously if you're traveling by airplane or train it's fairly straightforward unless you have a situation where it's partial business partial work and then you have that that gray area once again okay so taxi commuter bus a limousine so you can deduct fares for these and other types of transportation between the airport and station and your hotel or between the hotel and your work location away from home. So baggage and shipping, you can deduct the cost of sending baggage and a uh, sample or display material between your regular and temporary work locations, car or truck. You can deduct the cost of operating and maintaining your vehicle when traveling away from home on business you can deduct actual expenses or the standard mileage rate so here we go again with the car which is a little bit more unusual now you're not just doing a commuting thing you're not just visiting the client in your local area you're traveling away from home but using the car to do so as opposed to an airplane and whatnot so once again you can deduct actual expenses or the standard mileage rate discussed earlier under car and truck expenses as well as business related tolls and parking so if you rent a car while away from home on business you can deduct only the expense use portion uh, of the expenses the business use portion so if you rent a car you're you're deducting the business use so meals and lodging so you can deduct the cost of meals and lodging if your business trip is overnight or long enough that you need to stop for sleep or rest to properly perform your duties so you can usually uh, act, uh, you can use actual expenses or the standard meal allowance to calculate your deduction. So meals are another one that gets a little a little bit tricky. So they actually have like standard meal allowances, which are which give you a little bit of a somewhat of a safe place to to think about what the average meals are because you can imagine the situation where someone is traveling, your business traveling. And, but you're having very extravagant meals, which is way over the top of what you really need to eat to sustain yourself for the business purpose of the meal, which you would think that would be kind of a personal thing uh, as opposed to the business thing. And that's where, you know, gray areas come in. Same with the, the method of travel. Uh, if you get to deduct the travel, then people, well, I'm going first class then and, and that kind of stuff that that's where the tax code kind of manipulates people's behavior and whatnot in some ways. So uh, in, in most cases, you can deduct only 50% of your meal uh, expenses. And that was, a I think that's the general idea there being, look, you're gonna eat, you, you would have had to eat the meals anyways. You may, have, <laughs> you may have been able, if you were home to cook your own meals and therefore it would have been cheaper or something. So maybe if you're away from home, you're having to pay for meals which are more expensive so that I think that's the rationale of why they come to this 50% of meal expenses. So however, business meals are 100% deductible uh, if the meal meals are food and beverages provided by a restaurant and paid or incurred after December 31st, 2020 and before January 1st, 2023. So you've got this somewhat ambiguity with the meal situation. If you want to dive into that in more detail, you can see publication 463 for additional information. So cleaning. So you can deduct the cost of dry cleaning and laundry while on your business trip because you got to look good. You got to have your suit dry cleaned and whatnot. It's like a uniform. You have to have it. It's got to be ready to roll. Otherwise, people don't listen to you. Telephone. You can deduct the cost of business calls while on your business trip, including business communication by fax machine or other communication devices. Tips. You can, you can deduct the tips you pay for any expense uh, in this list. So more information. For more information about travel expenses, you can see publication 463. So reimbursing your employees for expenses. So now you have a situation. You got your Schedule C business or whatever your business in. You have employees that are doing the business trip thing 
and possibly they're you know spending their own money and you want to you want to pay for it somehow how how are you going to do that you can have some kind of reimbursement of their business related expenses right so and then there's going to be some standardization rules that you might be able to follow on these kind of reimbursement type of uh, situations as well because you can imagine when you have a reimbursement situation people trying to manipulate that kind of situation so just to give you an idea how that why that might happen like if if someone goes on a on a business trip or something like that and and they're able to expend extravagantly and you reimburse them for the spending you get the expense of of the of the reimbursement and you're actually basically paying them over and above what was necessary for just the business trip so you're kind of giving them wages in that case so in other words you can imagine a situation where people are trying to give people wages without being subject to taxes social security right because you're kind of giving them income in the fact that you're you're allowing them to spend extravagantly beyond what would be necessary for the trip you're reimbursing them for that extravagant kind of behavior and if it's a reimbursement it might not be included in income on the w-2 not subject to federal income tax social security and medicare so you can see where you know there's going to have to be lines that'll be drawn to how this is going to work so so the reimbursement you deduct and the manner in which you deduct it depend in part on whether you would reimburse the expenses under an accountable plan or a non-accountable plan so you can dive into more detail if you have this reimbursement kind of situation on the difference between the accountable plan and the non-accountable plan for details you can see chapter 11 of publication 535 that chapter explains accountable and non-accountable plans and tells you whether to report the reimbursement on your employee's w-2 right so if you have to report their reimbursement on the w-2 then if it's on line one as income it might it's subject to taxes so then so now when you have this reimbursement situation set up you want to you want to try to do it properly by the books here so that you can maximize the benefits of the reimbursement and properly account for it and do the whole thing and you can if you're in that situation again take a look at the publication 53 uh 535 you can find it on the irs website irs.gov irs.gov